Uh, Michael, you know, I mean, when we first met this character, part of the, the bundle of things that we learned about him was that he was incapable of feeling. It seems now we're seeing him deal with emotions that are breaking through and maybe potentially might explode out. Uh, for you, can you talk about that, what that is like as an actor to have that range to deal with? Um, well, I don't think we were ever meant to um, take Dexter at his word, you know. Um, I think he, um, I don't know, he's been thrust into situations which have, have uh, required him to deal with things that he uh, never anticipated. Um, but even at the beginning, when Dexter claims to be without the capacity for authentic human emotion, I think we're meant to be skeptical, and we're meant to sort of root for him to discover that maybe that's not entirely true, and I think he's certainly in, in the territory now where he's uh, discovered that. Um, and yet a fundamental disconnect remains. I mean, his ability to justify his behavior to himself is pretty impressive. Um, he, he has uh, grown in terms of his, his experience of, of himself in ways that are undeniably human and yet does maintain some sort of internal uh, conception of things that allows him to continue to kill people. Um, otherwise, I mean, really, would anyone watch it? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, it's, it's, I mean, it's, the character initially, and just the pilot script was so um, so much fun, and there was so much complexity there. But um, I mean, it's, it just continues to get richer, and that's a testament to uh, first and foremost the writing. Uh, and um, you know, Chip came on board and, and, and took it upon himself to take responsibility for the mess that we've made and write that uh, first. I mean, you're, it's like Obama stepping in. To the White House or something. But, um, sort of. Uh, um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it all comes down to what, what we're given, you know, as actors. And, and the writers on this show have, have been amazing um, in terms of finding ways to continue to challenge us. You know, I have a question for Chip, but I also want to let you know, as you guys know, we're going to open it up audience questions now, so if you come up, uh, please no proposals, no declarations of self, no threats, no pitches. Please have things at the end of the question mark. Um, Chip, uh, you know, Dexter put together this family, an unlikely family, uh, and now that's been blown up. Talk about moving forward, uh, a guy that was looking to be part of something now finds himself in a, with some solitary responsibilities. Yeah, it didn't just blow up, he blew it up. So I think in that sense it's kind of relatable that, you know, your own weaknesses kind of come to bear on you and the people around you and that you've melted down everything in kind of cosmic and profound ways. His son is now possibly in the, in the uh, same condition that he found himself when he was young. And he's, for the first time, is really an adult responsible for somebody uh, in the same way that that Harry would have took charge of him. So he's trying to pick up the pieces and at the same time he really just doesn't want to do this anymore. He's kind of reached out to humanity and it's really uh, not gone very well. <laughs> All right, do so we have uh, someone with a microphone and questions? Hey. My question is for David. Uh, why did you choose to do Twin Peaks? <laughs> 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 um, well, that was a, a point in my career where I didn't have a choice. Uh, that was, uh, you know, I was just actually trying for any job that, that I could get, and I just happened to get one where I wear pantyhose. Um, it was really a, but it was really a great, uh, just the lark to, I think the uh, actor was supposed to do it dropped out a week before and they opened it up to whoever wanted to come in or whoever could get in. And uh, next thing I knew, I was narrowing my legs down. <laughs> Which of course I continue to do to this day. <laughs> my questions for Michael. Um, thanks for making a serial killer that I love. 
And um, the voiceovers that you do while Dexter's preparing to murder somebody or playing with the kids are really rich. Do you watch the clips as you're doing the voiceovers to, so perfectly? Yeah, I um, record sort of a scratch track in my trailer that the editors use uh, for the rough cut of the show and then when I go out in for a final ADR session to clean up any, you know, sound issues, a plane flies overhead. In addition, I re-record all of the voiceover uh, to picture because otherwise you, you can't sync up a change in thought with a cut point or a change in expression. So yeah, it, it's, a, it's a nice final chance to polish that part of the uh, performance.